स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया In the version of the Cauchy integral formula that we have proved, we have imposed a strict condition on the curve in question. We demanded that the curve be homotopic in C minus Z naught to a circle of radius r around Z naught for some r positive. Now that's a pretty stringent condition to impose on the curve gamma, and we would like to circumvent uh, this condition. And the route to getting a more general Cauchy integral formula is by Uh, introducing the notion of a winding number. Let us begin this week by defining what the winding number of a curve gamma around a point Z naught is. So let's start by defining winding number. So to do that, let uh, gamma be a closed curve in the complex plane. so it's a closed continuous curve in, on the complex plane and let z, uh, z0 be some point which is not on the image of gamma image of gamma we define the winding number of gamma around z not to be the following integral which will denote as w gamma of z not this is defined to be 1 by 2 pi i times the integral over gamma dz by z minus z not notice that 1 by z minus z not is defined away from uh, z not and the fact that z not does not belong to the image of gamma uh, gives sense to what we have just defined so let me underline what we have just defined we have just defined the winding number of gamma around z not let's look at a couple of examples when gamma is say uh, from 0 to pi to c given by gamma of t is equal to z0 plus e to the power 2 e to the power it suppose we have such a curve then clearly z0 does not belong to the image of gamma after all gamma is the circle of uh, radius let's put an r here some radius r for some r positive and uh, we know that uh, uh, w gamma of z not will just turn out to be equal to 1 by the cauchy integral formula and if gamma uh, is in particular again gamma of t is equal to z0 plus r e to the power i m t for t in 0 to 2 pi then if you look at w gamma or maybe i'll call it 0 and 1 here then if you look at the w gamma 1 of uh, z not should sit down and check that that's going to be equal to m let's now draw pictures and check what uh, was happening we have our complex plane and uh, we have some point z not and let's look at the circle of radius r around z not if you notice the circle of radius r around z not it goes around the circle exactly once and comes back to the initial point and if you look at the uh, second case where gamma 1 is z0 plus r e to the power 2 i m t what does it do it goes around the circle when t is uh, 2 pi by m it comes back to the starting point it goes back again along the same circle and uh, it keeps winding around the point m times the winding number uh, w gamma z not 
exactly captures this particular notion. It captures the number of times a particular curve is winding around a given point. As is to be expected, uh, uh, the winding number uh, is being the number of times it winds around a point, it should be an integer. But uh, we will come to that only in the later part of this lecture. Initially, let us explore some of the nice properties of winding numbers that we can easily conclude. So, for example, let uh, gamma 0 and uh, gamma 1 be closed curves, be closed curves such that uh, in C minus Z naught, such that gamma 0 is homotopic as closed curves to a reparameterization of gamma 1, so that gamma 0 is homotopic as closed curves to a reparameterization of gamma 1. So, that basically means where, where in C minus Z naught. That basically means that Z naught is not in the image of the homotopy that is there. That is what it means, right? Then, what do we know about uh, dz by z minus z naught over gamma 1? We know that by the Cauchy, uh, Cauchy's theorem, this is going to be equal to integral over gamma 2 dz by maybe gamma 0 and gamma 1, right? This is going to be equal to the integral of z dz by z minus z naught over gamma 1. In c minus z naught, 1 by z minus z naught is a holomorphic function. So, in particular, the integral of this function along any uh, two homotopic curves is going to be the same. In particular, by introducing a 1 by 2 pi i term here, we get to conclude that the winding number of z0, gamma 0 around z0, this is the same as the winding number of gamma 1 around z0. So, the conclusion is here that two uh, homotopic curves, curves which are homotopic as closed curves, they are going to wind around a given point z0 the same number of times. The fact that the winding number is invariant under homotopy will be used very crucially by us. We will move freely within a homotopy class from one curve to other in order to calculate the winding number. Many times it happens that uh, a, a homotopic curve is where it is easier to compute the winding number and we will freely shift to that. One more point I would like to notice is uh, the following. Uh, the winding number that we defined is just for arbitrary continuous closed curves. And if you recall the uh, definition of the integral of a holomorphic function on an arbitrary closed curve, what we did was to get hold of a, of a uh, polygonal path which was homotopic to this continuous curve and defined the integral to be the same as the integral on the polygonal path which is homotopic to it. And we use the Cauchy's theorem, the power of the Cauchy's theorem to say that this definition is indeed uh, uh, a valid definition. And something similar is what, what will be done here to talk about winding numbers. We will freely move in the homotopy class, pick the particular curve which is the most suitable to work with and then try, try to prove our results. Let us look at uh, one more uh, consequence of uh, this homo invariance of uh, homotopy. Let us call it uh, a proposition. Suppose uh, we have a curve gamma, let maybe gamma 0. Uh, be a curve from A, B to C, be a closed curve and uh, Z0 uh, be a point not in the image of gamma 0, not in gamma 0. Let me do an abuse of notation and uh, just say that it is not in gamma 0. Suppose gamma 1 from a b to c be a closed curve such that absolute value of gamma 0 of t minus gamma 1 of t this is say strictly less than the absolute value of uh, gamma 0 of t to z naught then the conclusion is the following then the winding number 
of gamma 0 around z0 is the same as the winding number of gamma 1 around z0. What is that the inequality that is written here ensures that z0 is not going to be a point in uh, the image of gamma 1 either. In order to prove this theorem, what will be done is to establish that gamma 0 is in some sense homotopic to gamma 1 in C minus z0. Let us in fact explicitly write down what the homotopy is, uh, define the function h from 0, 1 cross a, b to uh, C minus z0. So, let me not write minus z0 as of now, that is there is something to be done to check that it is indeed missing the point z0. Let me just define h of s comma t to be at stage s, this is 1 minus s times gamma 0 of t plus s times gamma 1 of t. Notice that this is going to be a continuous function into C and that uh, h at every stage gives us a gamma s which is a closed curve h of 0 comma t is equal to gamma 0 of t, h of 1 comma t is equal to gamma 1 of t. So, in particular, this is indeed a continuous map which is a homotopy from gamma 0 to gamma 1. The only thing to note is that we still have not uh, checked that z0 does not come in the image of h. So, the claim is that z0 does not uh, belong to h of 0, 1, cross a b. Let us see what can be done. We will try to uh, see what is h of s comma t minus z 0. Let us write that down. What is the absolute value of this? This is going to be equal to 1 minus s times gamma 0 of t plus s times gamma 1 of t minus z naught. This is what we are computing, right. Let us add and uh, subtract a gamma 0. And if we do that, what will we get? We will get um, by subtracting a gamma 0, we will get s times gamma 1 of t minus gamma 0 of t and by adding a gamma 0, we get gamma 0 of t minus z naught. Now, let us use a triangle inequality, a variant rather and we will be able to write this as greater than or equal to gamma 0 of t minus z naught minus s times absolute value of gamma 1 of t minus gamma 0 of t. And if you notice this is again greater than or equal to absolute value of gamma 0 of t minus z naught minus absolute value of gamma 1 of t minus gamma 0 of t. Let me now take you to the hypothesis of this uh, proposition. Our assumption was that gamma absolute value of gamma 0 of t minus z 0 minus the absolute value of gamma 0 of t minus gamma 1 of t is a, a strictly positive number. So, this is going to be strictly greater than 0. And if you go up, we just uh, ensured that h of s comma t can never be equal to z 0. And hence, h of s comma t is not equal to z 0 for any s comma t in 0 1 cross a b. That means that h is a homotopy in C minus z naught homotopy of closed curves in C minus z naught from gamma 0 to gamma 1 and that implies that the winding number of gamma 0 around z naught, this is the same as the winding number of gamma 1 around z naught and that is precisely what we were trying to show. So, if our curves gamma 0 and gamma 1 satisfy this inequality, their winding number around z naught is going to be the same. Let us now try to see what happens when z0 is a point which is close to infinity, which is whose absolute value is large. Let us try to see what would be the uh, winding number of a curve around that, such a point. We just uh, developed all the require all the necessary prerequisites to answer this question. So, to do that, let uh, gamma 
B is some curve, B a closed curve and uh, Z0 uh, be a point in the complex plane such that the distance of gamma to Z0 this is greater than the diameter of gamma. Let me define what these objects are. The distance of gamma to Z0 as is to be expected, it is the distance of the uh, point Z0 to gamma which means that it is the distance of the infimum of the distances of all gamma of t comma z0. The distance here is just the absolute the difference of the absolute value, absolute value of the difference where t belongs to a b. This is precisely what the distance of gamma z0 to gamma is. And what about the diameter of gamma that has already been defined earlier that is defined to be the supremum over all t and t prime in a b the distance of gamma of t and gamma of t prime. Right. So, our assumption here is that the uh, diameter is less than the, the distance of uh, z0 to gamma. What happens when we have such a scenario? Let us define a new curve, define gamma uh, 1 of t to be equal to some point z or rather the fixed point z which is equal to gamma of a. The, fix, the starting initial point of gamma, let us uh, define a new curve gamma which is the constant curve at uh, the point z. And if you notice, absolute value of uh, gamma of t minus gamma 1 of t, this is bounded by the diameter of gamma. And uh, what was the diameter of gamma? Like gamma, of, or diameter of gamma is bounded above by the distance of z0 to, to the curve gamma distance is the infimum. So, in particular this is less than or equal to the absolute value of gamma of t minus z0. Now, we are in the situation of this proposition. We have just obtained such an inequality and therefore, the winding number of gamma 0 around or rather gamma around z0, this is the same as the uh, winding number of gamma 1 around z0. But what is gamma 1? Gamma 1 is just the constant curve at z0 and therefore, this is just going to be equal to 0. So, when the absolute value of z0 is very large say, so suppose this is our curve uh, gamma and we take some point z0 very far away from this particular uh, curve, what it tells us is that the curve does not wind around z0 as is to be expected. Let us next show that the winding number is in fact a locally constant number. So, let me write that down as a proposition. Uh, let gamma be a curve, closed curve and z0 be a point not in omega not in gamma, z0 be a point not in the image of gamma, let me just write it as not in gamma, then there exists an r positive such that on or rather for z in d z0 r w gamma of z is equal to w gamma of z0. That means, it is a locally constant function. Let us try to give a proof of this. Now, since image of gamma is a compact set, in particular it is a closed set and since z0 does not belong to the image of gamma, it is going to be in the complement which is an open set. So, there is certainly an r, it is an interior point 
So let me write down all, all that I just said. There is going to be an R such that DZ0R does not intersect the image of gamma. Since the image, since gamma of AB is closed and Z0 does not belong to gamma of AB, there exists R greater than 0 such that D Z0 R intersected with gamma of AB is empty. Now let us pick some point H in the complex plane. Let H be in C such that absolute value of H is less than R. And let us look at the following curve. Define gamma H of T to be equal to gamma of t minus h for t in AB. Let us see what happens when we look at gamma h here. Um, what is going to be the absolute value of gamma h of t minus gamma of t or the other way? What is the absolute value of gamma of t minus gamma h of t? It is going to be equal to the absolute value of h which is strictly less than r which in particular, let us see what is R. R is a uh, positive number such that DZ0R intersected with uh, gamma AB is empty. In particular, the distance of uh, gamma to Z0 or rather distance of Z0 to gamma is at least R. In particular, if you look at the difference gamma of T minus Z0 that has to be greater than R, right. And now we are in the setup of our proposition which tells us W gamma H of Z0 is equal to W gamma of Z0. I am going to give you an exercise to check that what is W gamma H of Z0. By definition this is equal to the integral 1 by 2 pi A times the integral over gamma H dz by z minus z0. Now this is going to be equal to 1 by 2 pi i integral dz by recall that gamma h of t is gamma of t minus h. So this is going to be z minus z0 plus h over gamma. This is the exercise that is uh, expected. Now if gamma is a uh, is a smooth curve or even a piecewise smooth curve by a change of variable it is very easy to check whatever we have written here as an exercise. So let me just write it down as an exercise for you. By the way this on the right is just the winding number of gamma around the point z0 plus h. Notice that z0 plus h is going to be in the disk of radius r around z0 and hence it does not belong to the point does not belong to the image of gamma and therefore the winding number makes sense. The only thing to be checked is this particular inequality for the general case. In order to do that, what is to be done is that you pick a partition of AB with a partition size small enough so that not only is the polygonal path that you get by connecting the uh, nodes homotopic to our curve gamma but also its translation will also be homotopic to gamma h and through that you will be able to establish this particular equality and therefore we will be able to conclude that the uh, winding number of notice that we already have this that the winding number of gamma h uh, around z0 is the same as winding number of gamma around z0 and from star let me write this as star From star, we have the winding number of gamma around Z0 is the same as the winding number of gamma around Z0 plus H. And that is precisely what we were trying to prove for H such that mod H is less than R, this is true, and therefore, hence, winding number is a constant on dz0 r
Now that we have explored some nice properties of winding number, let us get to proving that uh, the winding number is always going to be an integer. Let me note that down as a theorem. Mm, let gamma be a curve in the complex plane and uh, be a closed curve rather. And z0 be a point not in gamma, not in the image of gamma. Then the theorem states the following W gamma of Z naught is an integer. Okay, let us give a proof. The first thing to note is that even though we have put continuous closed curves in, in, the, in the generality of continuous closed curves, the first observation is that we do not need to worry about that level of generality, we just need to focus on a uh, uh, polygonal path which is homotopic to it. So, let me first note that by picking a partition P which is say A equal to T1 less than T2 less than up to say T n equal to B such that gamma restricted to T i or rather T j, T j plus 1 is homotopic with fixed endpoints. To, to what? To gamma zj to zj plus 1. Suppose this straight line path where zj is just equal to gamma of tj. So, suppose we start off with a closed curve. And suppose the point z0 is here, then let me use red color to get hold of a partition something like this. And we call this z1, z2 all the way up to zn minus 1 and then this is zn. So, we look at the polygonal path which is obtained by connecting these points. And uh, then, so where is this homotopic? Homotopic in C minus Z naught, it is important where it is homotopic. Then in particular, gamma is homotopic to gamma Z1 to Z2 to Zn to Z1. This is a closed polygonal path. And therefore, because it is homotopic and since uh, at every stage the, the curves here are homotopic, we can use that homotopy to construct a homotopy from uh, gamma to this polygonal path as closed curves. I will leave that uh, as a, an exercise for you to sit down and check. The idea is that we now have the winding number of gamma uh, is the same as the winding number of this polygonal path. So, we may as well have started off with this polygonal path itself. So, since the winding number of gamma around Z0 is the same as winding number of gamma Z1 all the way up to Zn to Z1 of Z0, we may start with the assumption that gamma is a closed polygonal path. So, for the purpose of this proof, we will uh, assume that gamma is a closed polygonal path and we will now try to prove that the winding number of such a closed polygonal path around a point Z naught is a constant. We will prove this by induction. Let us now prove the result by induction.
So, to do that let us first draw the picture and uh, we will write down the induction hypothesis after that. So, we have a polygonal path, let me first draw the polygonal path. So, we have a z1, z2 going on, this will be z n minus 1, this is going to be z n and back to z1. Now, let us look at the line joining z1 to z n minus 1. So, the first observation is the following, suppose, so we know that z0 does not belong to the image of uh, this curve, but suppose z0 belongs to the straight line joining gamma z n minus 1 to z1. Then the first observation is that because since our uh, winding number is going to be equal to any other curve z for uh, z in d z0 r where r is as in the proposition earlier, where r as above in the previous proposition. Because of that, what we can do is we will be able to pick some point z, z prime say, which is not on the line joining z1 to zn minus 1. Uh, pick a point z uh, prime, which is in uh, d z 0 r and z prime does not belong to e gamma z n minus 1 to z n z 1. So, we have ensured that we are picking some point somewhere here or somewhere here that is that is what we have just ensured we are ensuring that that particular point is not on this straight line. Let us now apply the induction hypothesis on the number of uh, points in the closed polygonal path induction is on the number of points, is on the number of points on gamma, on the, on the, on the number of points z1 to zn, that is what uh, the induction is on. Assume that it is known for up to n minus 1. So, suppose Oh, for n is equal to 0, uh, n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2, it is a trivial case and we do not have to address that case at all because we do not have a uh, uh, non-null homotopic uh, closed curve. When n is equal to 3, what do we have? Let us see what happens when n is equal to 3, then we have a triangle and our z0 is going to be either in the exterior or in the interior. What, what does that mean? In the convex hull, in the interior of the convex hull or it is in the uh, uh, exterior, in the, in the complement of the convex hull. In either case, what do we know? If uh, z0 belongs to, um, let me call the triangle T, T hat interior, then the Cauchy integral formula by Cauchy integral formula 1 by 2 pi i integral dz by z minus z0 is just going to be equal to 1 when integrated over gamma. So, this is when z0 is the red case and what happens when z0 is in the complement? Uh, C minus this, then our triangle is null homotopic in C minus z0 and therefore 1 by 2 pi i integral over gamma dz by, by Cauchy's theorem, this is going to be equal to 0. And in either case, our, uh, our winding number is going to be either 0 or 1 which is an integer, hence w gamma of z0 is an integer. Now, assume that the result has been true, uh, proved for up to n minus 1, assume the result to be proved for up to n minus 1. Then what do we have? Then w gamma of z uh, prime in this case, what can we write this as? This is going to be equal to 
let me just write it down and then we'll look into it again this is going to be z1 to z n minus 1 to z1 of z0 plus w gamma z1 to z n minus 1 to z n to z1 of z0 this is just splitting the two integrals this is 1 by 2 pi i integral over this curve of dz by z minus z prime uh, let me be a little careful this is not z not we, we picked our z prime in such a manner that it will not be on the line joining z n minus 1 to z 1 and uh, the second term here will be 1 by 2 pi i integral dz by z minus z prime over the curve which is the triangle with endpoints z1 z n minus 1 z n and if you notice we have what we have done is we split this integral as one in this direction and the green one is the triangle and if you notice the green and the black on this particular straight line will cancel each other off what we get would be the integral over the uh, closed polygonal path so getting back to what we have here by induction hypothesis this is an integer and for n is equal to 3 case we already saw that this is an integer and therefore n's w gamma of z prime is an integer and this tells us that uh, w gamma of z naught is also an integer. It is after all locally constant function. So, in fact, we have established that uh, the winding number which is being captured by gamma is indeed an integer and intuitively it is the number of times or the, the number of uh, uh, winds that the curve has around a given point z naught. Okay, we are now in a good uh, situation to uh, give the more general Cauchy integral formula without the uh, imposition of uh, an extra condition of our curve gamma being homotopic to a circle of radius r around z0. Let me write that down. So, let f be a function holomorphic on omega on an open set. and gamma from a b to omega b a uh, uh, closed curve which is null homotopic which is null homotopic recall that null homotopic means that uh, the curve is homotopic as a closed curve in omega to a constant curve then for z0 which is not in the image of gamma we have f of z0 times the winding number of gamma around z0 this is equal to 1 by 2 pi i integral over gamma f of z by z minus z0. Let us give a quick proof of this. We have done all the hard work already. The general Cauchy integral formula now follows by a few observations. The first one being that if you look at the function f of z minus f of z naught, this is a function which has a 0, it vanishes at z naught, it is a, uh, it has a 0 at z naught and therefore by the factorization theorem. What did the factorization theorem say? If f is a function which vanishes at z naught, then f can be written as z minus z naught times g of z. For holomorphic functions, we can write this as z minus z naught times g of z. And hence, on omega, we have f of z minus f of z naught by 
or rather and hence if you look at the integral over gamma of f of z minus z minus z naught this is the same as the integral of g of z notice that z naught is not in the image of gamma so this is in fact uh, even otherwise it would have made sense the point is that this is the same as the integral of g of z over gamma and being null homotopic by cauchy's theorem this is equal to zero this is by cauchy's theorem And therefore, what we get to conclude here is that 1 by 2 pi i times the integral over gamma of f of z by z minus z naught, this is equal to the integral of f of z naught by z minus z naught dz. And the right hand side is exactly equal to f of z naught times 1 by 2 pi i into integral of dz by z minus z naught over gamma which is the winding number of gamma over z and that is precisely what we are trying to do. Okay, let me stop.